We now have the ability to connect O1 Preview, which is the most advanced model of artificial intelligence within our Zapier workflows. Therefore, in today's video, we're going to learn what even is the use case. Like, why would we even use O1 Preview in an automation workflow for our business? Because obviously, we don't want to use this model for every single use case. Therefore, let's go ahead and jump into today's video where I'm going to give you a very specific use case of how to leverage this model, why you'd leverage this model, the cost of this model, and everything associated with the model. Sound good? Let's jump in. Welcome back, y'all. This video, I'm going to show you as fast as possible why you'd use the own one model in your workflows. Some context, you may not even touch this model. You might be like, I'm all good. I'll stay at the GPT-40. Proceed. Right now, as I'm sure you probably already know, or maybe you don't, but my suggestion when it comes to using AI and automation workflows, obviously you can use other providers like Google or Anthropic. But if you're using OpenAI, lean towards GPT-4 Mini just because of the pricing being so cost effective. Saying that though, using a more advanced model, opt for O1 Mini here is actually very impressive. The kind of inputs and outputs we can receive from O1 Mini. So let's go do an example together within Zapier's UI. All right, let's go ahead and get started here. I'm gonna zoom in. If you're like, Corbin, what, what is all this? This is from my channel. I have like hundreds of videos on Zapier automations and AI automations. As a side note, let me know in the comments down below what kind of automations or AI automations you're trying to see for your business. I'll look at making some videos on those topics as we want more Zapier content on this channel. I know, I've been seeing the comments. I'll give you some more Zapier content. First major question is why we would use O1 Mini in a workflow when it comes to automation or O1 Preview. Preferably O1 Mini, let's be cost effective here and just get better prompting. The reason you would use O1 Mini is when you're inputting a lot of data, but a lot of complex data. And what I mean by that is data like this, in the sense of this is an annual profit loss statement here. This is a lot of data. And then the output we're expecting is complex as well. Therefore, complex data in, complex data out, use O1 in that workflow. O1 should be used conservatively though, in the sense that you don't want like 20 O1 blocks in a workflow. You want to use this as like the meta prompt. Like this is the one that you can input a ton of data for and get a ton of data out that is quality. So I'm gonna show you an example here. What we're gonna do together here is I'm simply going to analyze this entire Google sheet here of an annual profit loss statement. This is gonna show you the power of O1 with its inputs and its outputs. So to start off here, since this is found in my test data folder here, on my Google Drive. Let's go ahead and proceed here with a new trigger here of Google Drive. We're gonna do an event here of new file in folder. Select your account. We're gonna do our folder. So for me, that folder is test data for obvious reasons. Test trigger and this should show our Excel sheet slash Google sheet. Perfect, we got our Google sheet here. Therefore, let's go ahead and parse it for the data that is relevant to it. Now, two major things here, just right off the bat. First major thing, if you wanna know how to parse data in the context of PDFs, Google Docs, etc., this does require a code block. For you to understand how to do that, watch that video right there. I show you in depth of how to parse data in any context when leveraging Google Drive. When I say parse data, I just mean like provide a PDF and we get all the text and we can actually do something with it. Second major thing here, if you wanna know how to prompt better and get better outputs using these kind of models, especially O1 Mini, I'm gonna do a video later this week, so make sure to subscribe. Also just check out, I might leave the card up there of how to prompt for O1 Mini because we actually have to prompt differently in the context of leveraging such a high level model. In addition, I'll go over how to get access to this model if you don't have access to it yet in that video. All right, let's jump back over to Zapier. Since this is a Google Sheet, we're gonna do Google Sheet. Makes sense. We're gonna do an action event of search, get many spreadsheet rows. Action, connect your account. We're gonna find our underlying spreadsheet based off our initial trigger. And this is gonna be the ID associated with that. So we're gonna come over to the three ellipses here and do custom. And then for the add data here, we're gonna hit this plus sign. And for the new file and folder, we're gonna simply hit ID. This is how they reference data within Google Drive's ecosystem. So EG, if you were doing a Google Doc here, you do a Google Doc. Obviously we can't because it's a Google Sheet, but you know what I mean. For the worksheet, we're gonna do worksheet one, which will be sample. Columns will do A through Z. And then the row count is gonna be the amount of rows found here. Scroll down, 45, let's put 50. We're gonna continue here, test this step. And we're gonna get all the relevant data associated with this Google Sheet. That's a lot of data. With this, we'll add a new step. This is gonna be our chat GPT block. Action event here is going to be conversation because we're gonna be talking to chat GPT. Hello, select your account. We're gonna go ahead and upper model here to O1 Mini. You know, like Mario, like O1 previews, maybe like regular Mario. And then O1 Mini is like Mario gets hit by a shell. <laughs> uh, <laughs> memory key, random string 32 characters, consistent outputs at scale. Now, first thing you'll notice when you select O1 Mini or O1 preview is we don't have the ability to add additional parameters here. And that is what's so unique about this new model here that we're dealing with from OpenAI. And I'm gonna dive more into that into the other video. For now though, all we care about in the context of O1 Mini is just the message or the prompt. Therefore, let's front load it. And when I say front load it is we're gonna provide all that data that we got from our Google Sheet here. We're gonna put it here based on this statement, give context. Semicolon parentheses is where we input our data. And the data is gonna be from the get mini spreadsheet rows and rows. Not right there. 
Put your cursor right there. Rows. Okay, perfect. With this data inputted, what's really, really powerful about O1 and the entire model family here is its ability to handle a ton of data within the actual prompt itself. We've seen in the past with other models like ChatGBT 3.5 16K. If you know, you know, they said it could handle a lot of data, but in reality, like if you used it, you know it just wasn't there. This is there. Therefore, I can be like generate a report of what happened. And since we're going to the future here, we'll just say generate a report of what happened in 2028. Kind of vague, I know. Continue, test step, test step. Now, if you've used this model at chatgbt.com, you are well aware that this model actually takes a lot more time for the outputs, like it's quote unquote thinking. Therefore, same situation here, when you're dealing it within API, it takes a little bit more time for the outputs to come. But when they finally do come, and what you'll notice is like, obviously the data we feed here is like, that's not really legible. Or it is legible, but AI doesn't care, it'll read it. This is the reply we get based off generally report of what happened in 2028. Millie's car rentals, and look, how in-depth this goes, y'all. Four, net income, extraordinary items, conclusion. Extremely impressive, even to the point of paired by Millie Car Rentals Finance Team. You got to chill out, chill out. It was prepared by you, oh one This kind of output, though, wow. Really impressive for the fact that we loaded in so much data for it to begin with. Now, this is just scraping the surface when it comes to the power of these O1 models. So I encourage you to check out that video that I go into prompting with these models in the playground, also showing you how to get access to these models as you're gonna learn we're in a new age when it comes to AI and where this whole industry is going when it comes to more advanced workflows. For now though, you have a comprehensive idea of the power of the O1 model and how to start leveraging it with Zappy Workflow. So if you found like you learned something today, make sure to leave a like, it's completely free. Is it free Corbin? It's free. I'm gonna leave some videos at the end here that may interest you, may not and I'll see you in the next video. Look at those videos over there. Are they any good? That's my face. Those are random videos. I think the top one looks cool. I'll see you in the next video.